Friends, Rotarians, guests, welcome to the August 11th meeting of the Downtown Rotary Club of Global. I'm Walt Kuno, President of your club, Paul Harris Fellow. Before we can talk, however, some housekeeping, and before we talk about the pitch and the punt, if you know what that is, don't be off sides, and certainly don't get a red card. Silence your phones. Secondly, please, if you're having lunch, put your ticket out so that the server's known you get it and can bring it on to you. I'm pleased today uh, having everybody here. Look around. If there's a Rotarian you don't see here that you would like to see here, pick up the phone and give them a call. We need more folks here to have more energy and so to make our club more effective. Providing our invocation today is Cliff Elgin, owner of Elgin Consulting, Paul Harris Fellow Plus Nine, and a 1912 Society member. Thank you, Cliff. I'm taking uh, Judy Handmaker's place, who's been uh, hobbled with a bad foot in a cast and went to the doctor this morning and was put into another cast for another month. So I'm filling in for Judy. This is her invocation. May we as Rotarians be the motivation to bring about the work of love, peace, and harmony to all we encounter. Let us commit to redeem peace around us among all creeds and races, and let us shine a love of acceptance and a compassionate kindness to all who observe us so that we are an example of the high ideals of Rotary. May we ask the indulgences of our almighty creator to give us wisdom to be in instruments to accomplish all these goals. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Judy. And now to give our pledge and four-way test, Paul Bickle, President of U.S. Specialties, Rotary Fund Board Member, and Paul Harris Fellow. And also, we don't have to move the microphone because Paul is even taller than me. <laughs> Thank you, President Walt. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. And thank you, Paul. And please be seated. And now it's time to introduce our guests. And I would, want, would like to welcome some of our Rotary dignitaries today. Oath Ray, did that catch your ear? Look at that. We're, we're all good. So, we have Michael Parker. Where's Michael? Michael's over here. Michael, take a stand. He's the Assistant Di District Governor for our club. And next, my fin friend, Otha Ray Stearman, and he's going to stand up. And if you've met Otha Ray, even just one time, you're going to call him your friend, because that's the way he is. And if you want a new friend, just go introduce Otha Ray to you. And uh, side note, Otha Ray is one of the best darn district governors we've ever had. Welcome, Otha Ray. If you haven't figured it out, Oak Ray's better half is our current district governor, Nancy, who we'll introduce in just a moment. Rotarians, please, great, we're at the microphone already. Introduce yourself first, then your guest. guests, please stand when you are introduced so we can recognize you. Go ahead. Hi there, President Walt, uh, Doug James, Advertising Director with Global Business First, and I'd like to introduce my guest, avid soccer fan, Lisa Benson, president and publisher of Louisville Business First. <laughs> Good afternoon, President Alt. I'm Sharon Riemel with Old National Bank. I'm the branch manager. And I'd like to introduce my guest, Jason Jackson. He's with Prudential Financial, and he's a wealth advisor. Thank you. Hi, President Walt and Ashley Brower. I am uh, pleased to introduce my guest today, Allie Wells, who is my co-worker at the Foundation for Healthy Kentucky. Good 
afternoon, my name is Jackie Jones. I'm a new member. I'd like my guests to stand up. Matthew Harrell, Sr. He is President and CEO of APK Development and Construction, which is an acquisition and development real estate company here. He is also a member of Louisville's Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board, which allocates millions of dollars annually for housing development. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you. Jackie, 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 Jackie. Did you bring a guest last week? I wasn't here. Did you bring a guest last week? No, so four out of the last five weeks, Jackie is the winner if a contest were to be held for bringing the most guests and serving the qualified. Thank you, Jackie. Guests, and there's, oh, I'm sorry, Delene, go ahead. Hello, Rotating. It's Delene Taylor, Executive Director of the Club, the one running around like a chicken with its head cut off. At meetings, um, I have two guests today. Mike Brown, who is the COO and co-founder of Flying Axes, and if you don't know what that is, please see him after. And Bella Longhorn, who barns. <laughs> also have the guest John Sanders, who is a mortgage loan officer with Stockyards Bank. Welcome, John. If y'all hadn't been to Throwing Axes, it's a wonderful place. Years ago when it first opened, they were one of the first places that had real local craft brew early and often. So I think that might be a great place for us to take out some of our frustrations on whatever you want. But a good place for a uh, business synergy or some sort of social event. It's a fun place. Glad you're here. All right. If any of you guests are interested in Rotary, Craig Sherman, I know I, there he is, he's in the back. He's going to be right up here at where our Rotary is tabled. So if you want to learn about being in Rotary after the meeting, meet Craig over here. Thank you very much. And now I'm happy to bring to the podium today's announcer, Mike Cool, major donor, past district governor. So we've got two best darn district governors ever in the room. Chair of the district nominating committee, and the Rotary Foundation Annual Programs Fund, and many, many, many more leadership roles we don't have time, and one of the best darn presidents ever. Welcome, Mike. It comes down again. Our Rotarians in the spotlight today include Executive Director Delaine Taylor, who was invited to speak yesterday at the August Network and Entrepreneurial Women event hosted by Rotarian Ingrid Hernandez. There were a lot of good shots on uh, Facebook for that. Several other Rotarians were in attendance, including Cliff Elgin, Marissa O'Neill, Claire Arnold, Denise Spears, and Jackie Jones, as well as several future Rotarians. David Christopher was highlighted in Newsweek for his efforts in encouraging black entrepreneurship. After raising $3 million in nine months, including a hefty contribution from the Rockefeller Foundation, David launched the Russell Technology Business Incubator in January 2021, which offers a curriculum focused on the three essential elements needed for a successful business, capital, networking, and education. The first class of 34 students all graduated, and 27 businesses are now up and doing well, and the second class of 34 candidates is working through the year-long program. Congratulations to President-elect Kevin Lynch, his company, Argy, was named among the fastest growing financial advisory firms in the U.S. by Louisville's Business First. Our next Rotary University will be right here following today's meeting, and it will focus on Rotary International. So if you're a new member in the last year and a half and you haven't been to that, you can join uh, Rick Harmon, and uh, I don't know who else is doing that with you, Rick. Chris. Okay. Where are you going to meet? Right back there? Right, right in front. Well, where is, now wait a minute. Where is what is Rotary going to be? Y'all going to meet back there. We're going to have a rumble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all no rumble. Be sure to save the dates for these upcoming events. Saturday, August 27th, Racing Louisville, our women's professional soccer team is trying to set a Lynn Station attendance record by giving away tickets. So we have 100. Look for an email giving you the details. Now, somebody here has typed on September 26th, we're having a golf shamble. But I hope it is a golf shamble. It's a shamble? It's a good shamble. That's a good You can see I'm not a golfer. 
On September 27th, we're having an evening in business synergy event with Canopy at Independence Bank in St. Matthews. It's a nice location for such an event if you haven't been there before. December 7th, uh, I got that right even if George Bush couldn't get it right. That's Pearl Harbor Day. Our annual holiday celebration, March 27th, now that's seven months away, so we're really planning on this one. A special fundraiser, celebration of our past, present, and future at Waterfront Botanical Gardens. And I think the reason they've given you seven months notice is so you can save up some money for that night at the fundraiser. And you can watch Sparks for details on all these things. So back to you, Walt. Thank you, Mike. And for those who don't know what a shamble is, a scramble we all know. Everybody tees off, you go to the best shot, you did it, and you do it over and over and over again. But lots of folks like to kind of play real golf, and real golf is you tee off, but then you take the best one of the four, then you play in, and that's called the shamble. So you got educated a little bit, and um, I'm looking forward to get educated more about soccer because football is football in my household. But anyway, I am looking forward to the game um, this weekend. Now, speaking of sparks, we're way back to where Mike was ending. This week has been chat, chalk jam full of stuff going on, and it's not out yet, so watch for it in the email tonight, and uh, read it because you'll hear more about all of these things. Also, I'd like to invite Denise Sears up to the podium. Well, I would like a raise of hands for anyone who thinks this is the best Rotary Club in the entire world. <laughs> All right. Let me ask you, who here would give up a dollar thirty-eight a day to make a difference in the lives of individuals for generations to come? All right, well, I have good news for you because I'm here to tell you how you can do both. <laughs> Support your favorite club and change lives. Um, I cannot believe that there's anybody here who has not heard about the Rotary Club of Louisville West Louisville Housing Initiative. If you haven't heard that about it, then you need to talk to Luke or myself or Gene, or Walt, or any of the other majority of people in this room who are super excited about it. Uh, I want to give you an update. Um, we have been silently fundraising, and we have now a million to raise towards our goal of five million. Just a couple of reminders. This program, which David Chadburn from Park Community is here somewhere, that this is the fiduciary partner on this project. This is the culmination of months and months and hours and hours of meetings. When we first came up with this idea, our first stop was the Federal Reserve. Is this being done anywhere? And they were the ones who said, no, this is groundbreaking. We call it groundbreaking. It's the Federal Reserve who called it groundbreaking. We're just echoing their sentiment. We then convened experts in our city in the affordable housing and bank home mortgage space for, again, hours and hours of meeting, vetting this. They are so excited about this because it fills a space that no one else is filling and that needs to be filled. All right, so a lot of programs out there, down payment, uh, help with taxes, but there's a link in the chain that isn't there, and this program is it. It will help put families who have been barred from becoming homeowners into a home, which changes everything for that family for generations. So we're super excited about it. Now, um, for those of you who have given, Thank you. I know it's hard. I know. I work for nonprofits. So I don't make a lot of money. I've got a kid who's still got to go to college, but I've put mine in already. And for those of you who haven't, I have some really exciting news for you. Um, in two weeks, your phone is going to ring. 
And it's going to ring, and it's not going to be a number that you recognize, and please don't do what you normally do. Answer it. Okay? You need to answer this one. You are going to be asked to do $500 for five years. That's the dollar thirty-eight a day. If you don't answer it, your name and number then gets passed to the next person in the room. And there's a very good chance that it will be Barbara Sexton Smith calling you the next time. No, I'm, no, no, this is me. Um, so, so uh, I've known Barbara for, for a number of years. I look up to her. She is the most amazing fundraiser this city has ever seen. If you don't answer on the first ring, when she gets you, you're going to be doing a lot more than 500 for five years. <laughs> I saw her wheels turning at the meeting the other day. So um, this is your chance. And I will tell you, there's so many people watching our club right now in the in government, the C-suites of some of our big organizations. They are watching to see if our Rotary Club is going to be the beacon of all Rotary Clubs in the world, coming out with a program that I will go out on a limb and say right now, will become a model adopted across the country. Thanks so much. Oh, one last thing. I've already apologized to our amazing coach, um, but I have to dash because at SOS we are preparing our next deployment to Eastern Kentucky, so i got to shed these nice clothes, put back on the work clothes, and get back to work. Thanks. Before Denise leaves the room, I think that Denise and Luke deserve another round of applause. And if you want to stand up, it's okay by me. This is a big deal, and right now, August 22nd, so this will be Rotary's second phone to text a thon for the benefit of the West Mobile House Initiative. So from 4.30 to 7 on Monday, August the 22nd, look for a phone call from one of your Rotarians asking you to support this important initiative. As was said earlier in our meetings beforehand in our board meeting on Tuesday, um, Rotary needs to get its house in order in lots of different ways. One way for this project is for us to, to sign on and support it so we can say this is how much Rotary has, has supported this and therefore the rest of the community needs to as well. So this is all great. All right, next on our agenda, we are honored to have with us today Rotary District 6710 Governor Nancy Stearman. Nancy is a CPA by training and began her career here in Louisville with Price Cooper's Waterhouse in 19, blah, 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 I didn't say those. Ah, there we go. She opened her own farm in 19, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Who could have imagined that Nancy's Rotary experience would take her from the first female member of the Greensboro Rotary Club to the first female president of the Greensburg Rotary Club to the first District 6710 governor to serve with the first female president of Rotary International Please welcome to the microphone, District Governor Nancy, and if I am, might add, one of the best darn district governors we will ever have. Welcome, Nancy. is from the Rotary Foundation and it recognizes the Rotary Club of Louisville with a certificate of appreciation for its financial support of In Polio Now. And you're going to hear more about that later from me because that happens to be my passion. Thank you. This is 
award is for um, from district conference in 21-22, Louisville was awarded as part of the best multi-club service project for the Serving Our Rivers cruise, the clean up, clean up the waterways project that happened last fall. So I want to present this certificate to you as being part of that award-winning service project. Last but certainly not least, Louisville, um, the Louisville Club is a fantastic supporter of the foundation. And last year you all gave more than $100 per person to the Rotary Foundation. That makes the Louisville Rotary Club a star club. So there is your star. <laughs> And just to put a little pressure on um, succeeding presidents, <laughs> we have this banner that will hold every star you already have and will leave space for the future stars. So, <laughs> so no pressure, but you don't want to be the one uh, president who doesn't, doesn't have their star. <laughs> In his introduction, Walt said he want, he couldn't imagine what I might talk about. Well, if you all know me at all, you're going to know that my passion is polio. So that is what I'm going to speak to you about primarily today. And I brought my traveling companion, besides Oak Ray, I brought Bear Hugs. He is um, the mascot. I know a lot of you have seen him. He's the mascot of our service project for, to raise funds for Polio Plus. And within this district, Bear Hugs has raised over $80,000 for Polio Plus, and that is enough to immunize, fully immunize against polio, 120,000 children. So he's done a great job. And speaking of polio, I'm so glad that we have the president of the soccer club, the boys in purple, here with us today. Because purple is the color of the soccer team. It is also the color of polio. So, for some time, and I didn't know you all would be here today, for some time I've had this idea for a project, a fundraising project, to raise money for polio. So, with that teaser, I'm going to talk for a moment about the foundation, and then I'll come back to it. But I have an idea to pitch to the club and to the, um, the soccer folks. You received the star that I gave to Jean because you supported the Rotary Foundation. And that is so important, and I, I thank you so much for that. Because your gifts to the Rotary Foundation last year totaled about $55,000. Well... That money has all but for $5,000 come back to the state of Kentucky in the form of disaster relief grants. $25,000 came to western Kentucky to help the tornado victims in the immediate aftermath of that tragedy. And I talked to District Governor Seaman this morning from our sister district in Kentucky, District 6740, where they are just having such a time dealing with the devastation but she has just received a $25,000 cash grant from the um, Rotary Foundation Disaster Fund. And she can immediately put that to use. She said she was going to buy, they would buy gift cards to give to the families so that the displaced families could, you know, begin to put things back together. So, you all gave $55,000. Well, $50,000 has come back into our state. And, you know, normally we don't see that money coming inbound. We give and it goes and funds all kinds of projects, especially international projects. But this year it came back to us so that we can see right in our own backyard the good that the foundation does. Now, Luke, 
when you were president during Oath Ray's year, you were able to raise about $61,000 for the foundation. Walt, well, we've got to do better than that. <laughs> we, we can't let um, Othere and Luke raise more for the foundation than we did. So, I have an idea. If you all would give, again this year, what you gave last year, and that was an average of about $175 per Rotarian, and give me five new major donors, you could double what you contributed to the Rotary Foundation last year. You could go from 55000 to 110000 So that is my challenge. That's my proposal. What do you think, Walt? We will, we'll, we'll, we'll do our <laughs> <laughs> All I had to say was yes. <laughs> Make up the difference. <laughs> <laughs> the all in. Well, it, it is a big ask, but this is the flagship club of the district. Um, I grew up in Louisville, and I've known about the Louisville Rotary Club forever, and I'm just so proud and humbled to be here today. And I'm proud and humbled to be able to go out into the other 55, 54 clubs in the district and share with them what you all do, your um, housing initiatives, your service projects. And if I could go and tell them that you have doubled, you've committed to double your giving to the foundation in my year from what you gave last year, that would help me tremendously in, in my fundraising efforts. And you are the flagship, so the other clubs look to emulate what you all do. So. I don't think that's too big an ask because you guys can you can accomplish anything you put your minds to. So now back to polio. Polio has been my passion um, for 30 years. I've, I've been a Rotarian for 30 years, and that's really what's what's kept me involved. And you know, Rotary has been at this since the late 80s, and we thought we had polio whipped. We really, really did. Up until the beginning of this year, the only active cases of polio were in Afghanistan, in the mountainous cave regions, um, where you just really couldn't hardly get to the kids that needed to be immunized. Well, since January, two cases have, have uh, been discovered on the African continent, Malawi and Mozambique, their, their neighboring countries on the southeast coast of Africa. The African continent was declared polio-free in 2015. Well, now it's back. It is back on that continent, and it will spread like wildfire. So that's bad enough. But about six weeks ago, in testing the sewer, the sanitation system, in one of the major cities in the world, they discovered the polio virus and that was London, England. And as an aside to that, I read last night that they have discovered five more cases in London, and now they are, um, this is South London, they are, <clears throat> the public health people there are telling the residents with young children that they must get them immunized, because immunization is the only way to avoid getting the polio vaccine. And what I would say to my clubs before this week was it's only a plane ride away from the United States. Only a plane ride away. Well, unfortunately, that plane has landed because there are now two cases of polio that have been reported in New York State. So it's here. It, it's on our shores. It's, it's in our borders. And when you combine that with the fact that approximately 25% of preschool aged children are not vaccinated, you can see that the need to contribute to polio is great. Probably greater now than it has ever been. So my ask for you all 
is to support polio in a very, very, very big way this year. We need, we need that to raise the money, to raise the awareness for research, but more importantly, to continue being able to immunize children, not only of, of the rest of the world now, but, but here in the United States against polio. So I've gone all the way around the barn to talk about my fundraiser idea. Purple is the color of the soccer team. Purple is the color um, for polio because when a child's immunized against polio, they put a, a, a purple, they paint their fingernail purple. So everyone will know that that kid always been immunized. Well, it occurred to me that maybe we could team up the Rotary Club and the soccer club and raise awareness and raise money for polio. What I've been thinking, and there's lots of ways you could do this, but in London during the pandemic, they illuminated all of the government buildings in purple. Could we do that at Lynn Family Stadium? Could you illuminate it in purple for one particular um, soccer game? And then proceeds, maybe a portion of the proceeds from the ticket sales could go to end polio now? I mean, purple and purple is a, a perfect partnership. I even have on purple nail polish today. <laughs> but it would be a perfect partnership, and, and you all may be able to come up with something more creative. But if you could team up with the soccer folks to have a special fundraiser to raise money for polio, we might be able to break a record that was set in West Tennessee when Rotary uh, partnered with Dunkin' Donuts and sold purple pinky donuts and raised almost $200,000. So, you know, dream big, that, that's our um, theme, Robert, when it, there it is. That's our theme for this year is imagine, well, I want you to imagine what you could do to help raise money and raise awareness for polio. It would mean so much to me personally, but to the children of the world, it would mean everything. And I'm going to close with a quote from Albert Einstein, where he said, Logic will get you from A to Z, but imagination will take you everywhere. So let's imagine how we can lick this disease. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Nancy, and I look forward to Nancy and Oath Ray being back with us, if not before, but in May for our Wednesday, what is it called, a woke, what is it, Greg? What's the Wednesday of Derby Week? It's called Wokes. 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 Derby. Wokes. Derby. Wokes. Derby. So how about the Wednesday before Derby? There we go. <laughs> Wednesday before Derby. It'll be here before you know it. That's right. Okay. Now, moving on with our program, the main event is to talk about soccer and Louisville. Now, most of, many of us um, are going to go to the game on Saturday night. I've got my purple on. I've also got a black jacket on because on Saturday night, right, it's going to be a blackout. So there's going to be a blackout at the soccer stadium. And I'd like to invite Mike Mountjoy, he's already up here, moving me off the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Founding partner and chair emeritus of MCM CPAs, sustaining member in Paul Harris Bellow to this podium. Thank you, Mike. Thank you all. Yeah, not to run you really off. I didn't need the introduction, but uh, but uh, my friend and coach and president. James does, but let me first say, also, uh, we brought James' as wingman, Pat Denbo, along with us today, you know, to guard him from the sides. Pat is an executive with Louisville, uh, with Soccer Holding, and helps uh, James and the other the whole thing. But we, you, you have heard James before. You've heard him enough a couple of times, so you can really almost understand this heavy Irish brogue that he brings to us. There's a few words that he says that, you know, maybe he shouldn't use in, in mixed company. Uh, but he's a soccer guy, and he's a soccer guy from the beginning. Uh, James, as I said, he's, he's Irish. He was a soccer player as a young man. He played in the 
under-21 league in Ireland. He played his career in Ireland uh, until 2014. He played about 12, I guess it was about 12 or better years in Ireland for a couple of different clubs, Stokes being one, uh, Bromwich being another. But he's played a cup. And then in 2014, he comes to the United States. Uh, and our, our friend uh, that was building the Orlando team uh, recruited James to come as a player. So he comes to the United States as a player, plays for Orlando uh, for a couple of years, and then he moves. We, this whole soccer thing that's going on here started with Wayne Estopinol. And I said, you know, COVID kind of put me out of the downtown while I went down there for about 35 years. That's when Wayne was also down there all those years and kept pestering me to help him put this soccer thing together for us to buy the Orlando USL franchise. So he and I went down, we met with Phil, uh, the guy that really uh, kind of showed us all how it worked, and he said, you know, he wanted us to buy the team, he wanted to help work that out. He said, I've got a guy down here that needs to be your coach. So Wayne and I are down there, we meet with one of his players. He's a player coach at that point, assistant coach with Orlando, you know, it's James O'Connor. So that was how I started. James uh, came to us at that point. He, we, we bought the team, we got it all worked out. He comes up, he, he coaches, he shows us how, what soccer's all about. I knew, I told Wayne I didn't have a clue about what soccer was about. I said they didn't invent it like out of college. But uh, <laughs> I was trying to learn, and James was trying to teach me and all the rest of us who, who got involved in this thing about soccer. So he was a wonderful coach. Got us in the playoffs almost immediately, actually immediately. Got us in the second in the second year of the third year of our existence. We win the championship with the best team in the league. We won, actually won the championship twice. He coaches the team. He's clearly the best coach in the league. He's such a good coach that Orlando comes back after him and they wave this gigantic check in front of him and lure him back down to, to be the coach of their MLS team. So he goes down there, wastes a couple of years going down there. <laughs> But then he, he kind of gets, he, he, he sees the light, you know, the, the whole, his religion comes back to him, so he comes back to us. He comes back. We've actually had a couple of assistants, and George Davis is going to be one of us. George is the player. We had three players coach the team in the interim for a little while. James comes back to us, and then he comes back as director of soccer, because now we're starting to expand. He'll tell you all about all the other things. There's a lot more here than just Little City Soccer, as Little City FC, as we originally brought it in, it's now a USL men's team. It's now an NWSL women's team. It's now, a, you've seen the stadium that's sitting downtown. It's now a training center out here off River Road. It's an academy program with probably, I don't know, eight, 900 kids in the academy program. And a foundation we put together, and that's why George is going to be here, but he's doing some foundation business, raising money to help uh, underprivileged kids who really can't quite afford the, the cost of being involved in the academy program. So, Without any more introduction, our, our main man, now gone from player to coach to director of soccer to now the president, and, and I will say the best president of the league of soccer holding, James O'Connor. Obviously, the, the club has evolved. It's gone from, from being a USL team primarily to, to now we would have a women's team, which is tier one. We have our academy on both sides, boys and girls. We have a, a $15 million training complex, which is world class, literally just off of the road here. We've just launched the foundation. Um, so, one of the great things about the organisation, it's gone from being a, um, a single entity, if you like, to now multiple. 
in so much as we've been able to create opportunities not just for the men but also for the women. And one of the great factors that we're really passionate about is creating opportunity for our younger players and young people in the community. So we've had, to Mike's point, we've had players who played for New City who are now coaching in the academy and passing on best practice to some younger talent. We have five uh, players from the academy that are actually signed to the first team squad. We have a 17 year old playing um, in Joshua Winder regularly for the first team, which that alone is, is, is a great um, statement for us. So the, the club has evolved now where it's, it's very inclusive to men and to women. With the launching the foundation, we are now starting to have an impact in the community and some of the, uh, the people that are less fortunate and bringing soccer to, to some of those folks as well. You know, one of the things that we love about the men's team, and, and you alluded to it, is the spirit that they have on and off the pitch. Um, you know, they really, they're a team no matter who starts, who subs, um, they're supporting each other, the younger ones and the older ones. So, you know, you were part of creating that environment. And how, how, do, you, how, do, you create, how do you foster that and keep that going? Um, a great question. Uh, we have an internal model that we would call pitch, which is personal accountability, intellectually engaged, trust, commitment, and humility. And they're the pillars of the whole organisation. And that runs through men's team, women's team, front office, academy, the, the whole organisation. And then um, a big part of that is it creates expected behaviours. And that's something that myself personally am very big on. Is, we expect anyone coming into the organisation to be a good person and, and that's the, the first piece for us and then you, you're expected to behave in a certain way. Um, so I think the foundation of that model has really helped the organisation to grow but it has allowed us to be able to get great people into the organisation which again as everybody knows is really important. You know we, we absolutely love having the women's team here and um for those of you that aren't keeping score, it is the first top tier professional sports team in Louisville since the Kentucky Colonels in the 1970s. So I think that's awesome. Um, and, you know, there's really, soccer holdings has prided itself on, on offering parity to the women in ways that aren't seen in other cities, in other clubs. Um, talk a little bit about that, why it's so important, and has it resulted in players wanting to come here? Yeah, but again, I mean, that does something then from, from ownership. The, the equality piece was something that was really important, as we set out about launching the, the top tier women's program. So when we built the training facility, the, the equality aspect goes right through the building. So everything on the men's side is, is symmetrical and identical on the women's side. So everything is, is, um, is exactly how it should be, to be honest with you. And I think when we, when we look at some of the players, we have world-class players actually in our backyard. I don't think enough people realise that Nadia Nadine has just played in the European Championships for her country, Denmark. She's over 100 caps. To, to get 100 caps for your national team is a huge feat. And in this particular week, we have Tottenham Hotspur, which is one of the biggest brands in world football, coming and playing in our stadium. Um, AC Milan are also here, one of the biggest Italian teams. And we have all this in our backyard. And I think that's something that we certainly don't take for granted is our women's team has allowed us an opportunity to bring top tier sports on the female side, but also to bring some of the best players in the world. A couple of weeks ago, we played a little bit rain. We had Megan Rapino, Tobin Heath, some World Cup winners that are actually playing um, for Olympic rain. And then our own Jess McDonald, who won the World Cup with the US women's national team, again playing in, in our backyard. And also, being a great role model for our young female um, academy players and that's something again we want. We want our, our players to be mentors, not just for our academy players, but through the whole um, community. I love Jess's spirit um, and every game at the end of the game she's out walking the field signing autographs. And, but she wanted to come to Louisville, right? She, she wanted to be here and bring her son and raise him here. She did, and that's a testament to, um, to the whole community and what we're actually trying to build here. I think that she saw we were very intentional and very transparent about making sure that the equality piece, the facility piece, the support piece was all uh, something that she, uh, she knew she was going to get when she came here. I think it's great. Um, okay, here's a tough one. Okay. <laughs> so there's been some roster changes mm -hmm. recently with the women in trades. Yep. Can you touch on any of that? Absolutely. Um, so we had a, a new coach that came in and, and 
been a previous coach myself, when you when you look at the squad, you will always have players who you think are um, part of your philosophy. Um, you know, some players they think maybe they're not a great fit for what you're trying to build. Uh, another aspect that we take tremendous pride in: some players have left, but we're, we're a little different to some of the other teams. We've never said to a player, even though we can, we're trading you to New York or we're trading you to a certain city. We've we've sat with the player. We've been very transparent and we said, here's an opportunity. In, in some cases, they've had two or three teams that were interested and we've engaged the player and asked them where do they want to go and we've allowed them to decide where they want to go and then we've made the, uh, made the trade on that basis, which again is something that we take great pride in. It's not that we're just saying to somebody, okay, well, you know, you're going to go to New York or you're going to go somewhere you don't want to be. Um, but again, that's all part of the dynamics associated with that league. It's a single entity, it's a little bit different to the men, um, but the transparency piece is something that's really important to us as an organisation. If anybody has any other questions, please feel free to go to the mic in the back of the room and then ask your question. Um, in the meantime, tell us about the Women's Cup. I mean, there, it's bigger this year, there are top tier international teams coming. Yeah, it's, really yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredible competition again to have that. For those of you that don't know, last year you know, we had Bayern Munich and Paris Saint Germain, two of the biggest brands in the world, and, and our team got to compete against those teams, and we ended up winning the tournament, which was, was phenomenal for a first year team. So this year the, the competition starts on Sunday. We have four international teams we have uh, Tottenham, AC Milan, Tokyo Verde, and then Club America, which is the Mexican powerhouse, so huge competition that's going to go. Sunday there will be two games, Wednesday there will be three games, and then Saturday there will be two more games. So it's a, uh, a healthy aspect of, of football this week with the men's team Saturday night, which is a um, huge game because we play Tampa Bay, we're number one and they're number two, so we're expecting the, the biggest crowd ever on Saturday night, which will be phenomenal. So we're really excited about this coming week. Yeah, we are too. We've got 40. No, 35 people going from the club on Saturday night. Um, are you are you doing the big? Oh, ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> members come ask a question. Steve, I'll let you go first. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. Um, I'm sure you get asked this a lot, but uh, are is there anything in process about our club becoming MLS really? Great, great question. Yeah, I, I think the the piece with MLS is it's um, MLS are in a position where they geographically try to grow the game, and I think for them they're looking at specific markets. There have been discussions previously around MLS and um, around some of the opportunities. They've been incredibly impressed with our training facility and our stadium. They were pretty candid with the the quality of the training facility. So. I think as they continue to look at their plans and geographically where they feel as if some of the opportunities are our best place for them, they've definitely been really impressed with what we're building here and what we continue to build. So we feel really good about what we're building and I think for us the, the primary goal is to my contend to win as many championships as we can, but but also the the academy gives us a unique opportunity to, to be to be able to really have a, a great impact. And what I mean by that is to truly create a pathway for young players that are in the community to be able to come, to be able to play for your local team, and if you're good enough, go on and perhaps get an opportunity in, in Europe. And Josh Wyner joined our academy at 14, he broke into the first team at 16, he has some of the biggest teams in the world that are actually monitoring his progress, and that presents a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to give kids an opportunity to come in on both sides, and um, play for a first season and hopefully give them something that could be a life changing event for them. Thank you for coming today. I've got a couple of questions for you. So, um, what is what what can you share with us about what the economic impact of, of your hope? I mean, you've got the women's, you've got the men's, you've got the academy, that means you've got lots of employees, you've got, you know, you've got a big payroll. So, what, what kind of it's a great question, and that's something that, again, ownership deserve enormous credit. I mean, even through COVID, we take great pride. Nobody was ever laid off. Everybody was um, was supported. Um, and then as regards to the actual impact, I mean, we have uh, tournaments in March. We have tournaments in, um, in fall, again, at the academy side. So we're bringing continually a load of 
um, teams and organisations that come from out of state in and then come in and have room nights and will have obviously uh, restaurant um, needs as well. So as it pertains to the actual organisation we have an events team, the women's team, you're probably looking at about 35 full-time employees, front office again, you're probably closer to, to 50. Um, so we've had USL Showcase, which was the first time, which actually was, there was over 300 um, people varying across all different professional teams within the league that came to our game against Phoenix. And you know we filled out a couple of the hotels with, with room lights as well. So I think the, the economic impact is, is very strong. It's probably something we should actually try to quantify and then go to the city with, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of folks may go, you know, well, it's, it's, it's not Saturday mornings in the South or Saturday afternoons in the South, but it, but it is very important to what we're doing here in Louisville, and it, it, makes, it makes a difference to those young people that are, that are playing. Do you have a story you'd like to share about one of, your, one of the youth that um, wouldn't be able to play soccer if it weren't for you guys? Absolutely. I mean, that, that's where, again, that was one of the main reasons of launching the foundation. I mean, no child has ever been turned away from our academy. Um, so, Carlos Mungo is, is probably the best example. Um, you know, we, we launched the academy, wasn't in a position to be able to, um, to pay the fees, so we were scholarship. We, we came up with different ways to make sure he was supported off the field as well. And he was a really talented player. And, he now was a part of the first team squad. He was able to go on at a professional contract, and they would train every day with the first team. And he, he came on recently in the last 20 minutes in a game. So there's some great stories where we've been able to make a real impact, and I think that's what we're really passionate about is, is trying to action because you know people will, will speak a lot, but then maybe action doesn't necessarily follow up. So I think that gave us the impetus to really launch the foundation you know, with our first soccer ball which will be um september 28th which we're we're expected to set out 50 50 tables again for the local community and all the funds from that go back into the community to be able to bring soccer to some areas we've just expanded into all the county on the academy side in shelby county and we're bringing some different um, programs where our coaches are going into some of the areas there and bringing soccer to to some of the less fortunate people so it's it's something we're really passionate about and we, we'd have a a big sense of responsibility to make sure that we go out and you know we, we actually help the community. I've seen the uh, drawings and some of the plans for around the stadium mm -hmm. and they're pretty extensive. Can you talk about timelines and, and what's in store? Yeah, I mean that's something we're really excited about as well. I think we look at the um, the opportunity to maybe enhance some of the aspects of downtown, and I think the the longer term goal is to try to develop those areas and and make it a really great uh, environment for families where people can come down, they can have um, some time in an entertainment area, and then come in and take a soccer game as well. So um, I think in the next ten years to be able to quantify the impact that soccer holdings, which is the holding company, owns. Um, all of the football entities, I think there will be a huge um, contribution for ourselves over that uh, period of time. Uh, I had my question, having been to several games at the stadium, uh, these plans include improved parking. Been Great question. I mean, that's um, something again for us who worked on um, intently this year is the fan experience. and. Um, we've had many meetings and conversations with LMPD about trying to make sure that the uh, the entrance and exit to the stadium is expedited. Um, the litmus test will be this weekend because we're going to have the, the most amount of people that we've actually ever had. So um, it's something we're definitely aware of and we're, we're working um, hard to try to make sure that that experience is, is made a little easier. Question. Um, has anybody ever asked you about Ted Lasso? <laughs> it's funny because somebody said to me that you ever watched Ted Lasso and I, I didn't know what they were talking about. And so you should watch it. And uh, I actually watched it, I thought it was great. I, I found it really funny. And um, my brother's wife, um, incredibly, her uncle actually directs it. And, uh, <laughs> I only found this out, my brother was here about three weeks ago. And, we were sacked and it came up in conversation and uh, Eve was like, yeah, my uncle is the, is the director. I was like, wow, 
<laughs> well, what made me ask? I'm a fan. If you haven't watched it, it is really, really funny and it's wholesome. And um, but when you started talking about your pitch, about about your the, the, the values that you had, yeah. that's when it reminded me of Ted Lasso. Now, so I'll, I'll get off of that because that's we're not here to talk about a comedy show. But last question is: So, what are you most proud of? What you've done here in Louisville? Great question. Uh, I think as an organization we take tremendous pride in, I would say, the impact we've had on the community. But we're very, um, let's say, humble. The ownership do a phenomenal job. The ownership do not come out and, and canvas a lot and speak a lot and you know, put their chest out and bang their, bang their chest. But I think when you look at the impact we've had um, since launching in 2015, the, the families we've been able to help, the children we've been able to, to create opportunities for, I think, is something that I personally take enormous uh, pride in. As I say, not sure I've ever been turned away from the academy, but even prior to launching for the academy, the amount of community um, experiences that our players have been on, and even myself have been on, helping certain charities and trying to, to have a positive impact in the community, I think that's something that we take probably the most pride in. Okay, well, let me, let me add that. The, the initial goals this whole process were to bring something to Louisville that young people could get attached to and for the for the benefit of retention, you know, the attraction and retention of young people to the city of Louisville. Because we looked at this and you know many years before, you know, we we're losing our best and brightest and we needed something to, that would be attractive to those young people, give them something that's a staking ground. It's not a a red team or a blue team, but it's a purple team. It's an all of Louisville team. It's not one side or the other. And that's what James has done. And his culture in that team has created all of these things that have grown around that, that pitch culture that he talked about a minute ago. It's made it what it is. And I feel good about the fact that I think we have kind of accomplished, at least we're accomplishing that, uh, that attraction and retention of youth we hope that they're all out there, and I can tell you, for, for guys who got 12 grandkids, uh, I watch them, you know, play soccer, go to those women's matches, try to get those those autographs, go to the men's matches, try to get, you know, it's, it's all about that. So it's, he's done a great job, and, and we as the ownership are really happy in how it's all evolved. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much, Jay. One more thing. So, in appreciation of you coming today, we heard about the West Louisville Housing Initiative earlier. Um, the Rotary Club of Louisville is making a $500 donation to the Rotary West Louisville Housing Initiative on your behalf. So, why don't you do that? Thank you. And now, for the best part of the meeting, right? We've got our door prize. Are we still? Do we still have? Oh yeah, okay. Racing Louisville will be just a big We can't miss that. So James is going to pick the ticket. Is this for Saturday? What's this for? Yeah, this is for yes. Yeah. So another. So you're going to somebody here is going to get another chance to come see see the um, men's team, Blue City. All right. Here we go. Four eight seven one three seven. I hear somebody say, oh, we have a winner. All right. So, we're going to see, see Delaney later. And uh, James, thank you very much. We do want to talk about the racing wool again. So we have 100 free tickets. First come, first serve. If you take a ticket, the, the goal is to have the biggest attendance, which means you, you need to use that ticket. So don't take it and not use it, but uh, that'll be coming out soon. Thank you, James, for that. And now, um, my favorite part of the meetings, the World Wide Web, it's Walt's Words of Wisdom. And so we're going to do the soccer pitch today. If I could get this without turning it over. It's gone. There we go. All right. So, what do we have up here? So we have Amy Wambach, and I think she said something, I never scored a goal by myself. I always get out pass from somebody else. Good things to live by. Keep working even, even when no one is watching. Alex Morgan, another women's soccer player. The more difficult the victory, the greater the happiness in winning. 
Um, some of you are too young to know Pele, but he was, a, I think, a good player. <laughs> I learned a long time ago that there's something worse than missing the goal, and that's not pulling the trigger. Be a ham and our Walt's Words of Wisdom for the Week, a smooth sea never made a skilled mariner. Good day, Rotarian guests. Come down here and see Craig Jer Sherman. We've got Rotary University in the back. We will see you all next week. We'll see some of you at the soccer game. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Old Throwaway. We are out.